Hi everyone, this video is made on the purpose of introducing the distinctive style of Chinese arts. I have selected a few significant pieces ranging from sculptures, paintings, and architects to present, and I also prepared points that can be used for Western comparison. Let's get started. Shang Dynasty from 1600 to 1050 BCE is the first great Chinese dynasty of the Bronze Age. Excavations at Sun Xingdui have revealed a civilization dates at 1200 to 1050 BCE, which is contemporaneous with the Shang but with a different artistic aesthetic. The most dramatic find at Sun Xingdui was a bronze statue more than 8 feet tall. The figure of unknown identity is highly stylized, with elongated proportions and large staring eyes. Just below the neck, great arms branch dramatically outward, ending in oversized hands that once held an object. Statues of two worshippers which have oversized eyes and tiny hands will make a good comparison with a standing male figure from San Xingdui. Both of them take an important role in religious rituals. At 221 BCE, Qin Shi Huang first brought China unity. He was buried beneath an immense mound guarded by more than 6,000 life-sized terracotta soldiers. Although produced from common molds, Every figure has an individualized appearance. It resulted in a brilliant balance of uniformity and individuality. The terracotta army consists of statues of cavalry, chariots, archers, lancers, and hand-to-hand -hand fighters. Construction of the mausoleum involved over 700,000 workers laboring over 36 years. In addition to the terracotta army, the tomb of the first emperor is also located nearby. Archaeologists believe it contains a vast treasure filled underground funeral palace, which matches the palace the emperor occupied in life. A parallel can be drew to Egyptian pyramids of pharaohs and the belief of life after death. Dunhuang, the westernmost gateway to China on the Silk Road, long had been a Buddhist pilgrimage destination and home to thriving communities of Buddhists. Wall paintings of Dunhuang, including Paradise of Amitabha, which was made in mid-8th century, have both religious and aesthetic values. Paradise of Amitabha shows how the splendor of Tangaira and religious teaching could come together in a powerful image. Richly detailed, brilliantly colored pictures seep in the opulence of the Tang dynasty, such as this one, richly aided worshippers in gaining faith by visualizing the wonders of Pure Land Paradise. Pure Land teachings asserted that individuals could obtain rebirth in a realm free from spiritual corruption simply through faith in Amitabha's promise of salvation. It brought me to think of Pentecost and Mission of the Apostles as the way they present the Church as the road of salvation. Xie He formulated a set of six canons of painting in the earlier 6th century. The paintings and series at that time reflected the artistic concepts and aesthetic pursuits. In a sense, the basic artistic characteristic and aesthetic standards of Chinese painting were established during this period. Several variant translations have been proposed, and scholars actively debate the precise meaning of each canon, particularly for 1 and 2. James K. Hill's translation for 1 and 2 are still cryptic, so I translate one of the explanations Chinese scholars have proposed. 1. The movement and facial expression to, to reveal the figure's characteristic. 2. The body form and posture should resemble the figure's temperament and status, or the handling of the brush and the careful placement of the strokes. The simplest canons to understand are the third, fourth, and fifth, because they show Chinese painters' concern for accuracy in rendering forms and colors and for care in composition, artistic concerns common in many cultures. The sixth canon speaks to the standard Chinese painting practice, copying. Chinese painters, like painters in other cultures throughout history, trained by copying the works of their teachers and other artists. Along the River during Qingming is the most well-known painting among Chinese, and also an interesting painting to talk about. This 5.28 meter long painting has three major sections. The right section is the rural area of the city. There are crop fields and unhurried rural folk in bucolic scenery. In the middle section, there are businesses of all kinds. The vendors extend all along the Great Bridge, 
called Hongqiao, the Rainbow Bridge. The left half is the urban area around the city gate, where economic activities are happening. This piece can be compared to Ambrogio Lorenzetti's Peaceful City. The fresco served as an allegory of good government in the Sianese Republic. Same concept applies to along the river during Qingming. Part of the painting reminds me of an Impressionist painting by Pizarro, both from a perspective above ground level and both depicting a scene at a moment. But Chinese painter focused on the scene, while the Impressionist painter focused on the moment. Travelers among mountains and streams was done in early 11th century by Fan Huan, one of the first masters of recording light, shade, distance, and texture. He secluded himself among the forests and the mountains, devoting himself to, to observing the effects of atmospheric weather and seasonal changes on the scenery. Running along the central axis of the scroll, the central mountain dominates the scene is a classical example of northern soul monumental landscape painting. For Western comparison, Chinese artists did not seek to reproduce nature like Italian painters did centuries later, but rather capture the essence of the nature. Finally, architecture from Ming and Qing dynasty. The third emperor of Ming, Yongle, moved the capital back to Beijing and built the imperial palace at its core in 15th century. The picture at the top shows the Hall of the Supreme Harmony, the largest wooden building in China, and it was the climax of the Forbidden City's long north-south axis. It housed the Ming's Emperor's Throne Room. For the columns of the opulently appointed throne room, builders had to transport gigantic tree trunks from Sichuan province down the Yangtze River. The picture at the lower right shows the Nun Gate, the southern entrance. Only the emperor could look through the central portal, which is an example of how the layout of the Forbidden City provided the perfect setting for the elaborate ritual of the imperial court. At the opposite architectural pole, from the formality and rigid axiality of Ming Palace architecture is the Chinese Pleasure Garden. Ming gardens are often scenic arrangements of natural and artificial elements intended to reproduce the irregularities of uncultivated nature, which is different with 17th century French garden. The typical design of garden is a sequence of carefully contrived visual surprises, and fantastic rock work is a prominent element. Thank you for watching.